Hello everyone, so in this video, we are going to compute and interpret the mean, median, and mode of ungrouped data. So by the way, what is a measure of central tendency? When we say measure of central tendency, that is the summary measure that describes a whole set of data with a single quantity that is represent the middle or center of its distribution the way of which group of data that cluster around a central value. In short, this is the measure that tells where the center of a data set is located. So the most common, uh, commonly used measures of central tendency are the mean, median, and mode. Okay, the mean for the ungrouped data this is the most commonly used measure of central tendency. So when we speak of average, we always refer to the mean. So we can use this formula, okay, the summation of x over n. For example, six friends in a biology class of 20 students receives test grades of 92, 84, 65, 76, 88, and 90. Find the mean of these test scores. Okay, first, Using the formula, so we're going to get the sum of their scores, 92 plus 88 plus 64 plus 76 plus 88 plus 90 over 6. Bakit 6? Because that is from 6 students. So, other scores, so that is 495, then 495 divided by 6 that is equal to 82.5. So therefore, the mean test scores of the six students are is 82.5. Another example for the mean, we have the ages of the five contestants in uh, statistics quiz B are the following 18, 17, 18, 19, and 18. Find their average age. So first, uh, using the formula, we're going to add all the values or the, all the ages. Then divide the sum by 5. So because we have 5 contestants. So get the sum of your numerator. So that is 90 divided by 5. That is equal to 18. So therefore, the mean age of the contestant is 18. Median. So when you say the median, the median is the midpoint of the data array. So before finding this value, the data must be arranged in order from least to greatest or vice versa. The median will either be a specific value or will fall between two values. So, but before that, so for example, uh, you have a given data and the given data is add numbers. So, pag add numbers yung given, ibig sabihin meron kang isang middle data and that is the median. Pero kapag may, uh, uh, like for example, we have 5 data here. So, the median here is the x sub 3. Pero kapag meron kang even na data, so meron, uh, ibig sabihin nun meron kang dalawang middle value. So, uh, ulitin ko lang, kapag may add numbers, Add numbers yung given na data, ibig sabihin, meron lang isang gitna doon at yun yung median mo. Pero kapag meron kang even numbers, so meron kang dalawang middle value. So anong gagawin mo doon sa dalawang middle value? So add mo silang dalawa and then divide it by 2. For example, 7 mothers were selected and given a blood pressure check. Their blood pressure uh, pressure were recorded below 135, 121, 119, 116, 130, 121, and 131. So first, we need to, okay, to find our median, we need to arrange the data in order. So bahala kayo if that is in ascending order or in descending order. So in this case, so I arrange the data in ascending order. So nag-start ako sa mababa, pataas. So bilangin natin ngayon kung ilan yung data natin. So 1, 2, uh, 3, 
4, 5, 6, 7. So, 7 is an odd number. So, sabi ko kanina, kapag odd numbers, may isa ka lang dyang gitna. At ano yon 121. So, therefore, 121 is the median on this problem. Next, another example for median. So, 8 novels were randomly selected and the numbers of pages were recorded as follows. So, we have 415. 398, 402, 400, 420, 415, 407, and 425. So first, uh, same process nung ginawa kanina, we need to arrange the data in order. So bahala kayo if that is in descending order or in ascending order. So ang ginawa ko dito, uh, inarrange ko siya in ascending order. So nag-start ako sa mababang number up to the ha uh, highest value. So, next. So, bibilangin na natin ngayon kung ilan yung given na data. So, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. So, meron tayong even number na given data. So, anong gagawin? ano mangyayari dito? Meron tayong dalawang middle value. So, ano yon? Yung 407 and 415. So, ano yung gagawin natin sa dalawang middle value natin? So, add natin silang dalawa divided by 2 and then, yan yung median natin. So, therefore, yung median dito is 411. Also, the last uh, measure of central tendency is the mode. It is the value that occurs most often in the data set. So, the number value observation in a data set which appears the most number of times. For example, Find the mode of the given data set 15, 28, 25, 48, 22, 43, 39, 44, 43, 49, 34, 22, 33, 27, 25, 22, and 30. So, para mas mabilis natin ma-identify kung ano yung number na nag-appear more than once o mas maraming uh, dyan sa given data set, i-arrange natin in order. So, arrange muna natin yung data set natin. It's either in ascending or descending order. So, ang ginawa ko again, in ascending order. So, para madali natin makita kung ano ba yung number na mas marami. So, in this case, so, what do you think? So, what do you think uh, the mode in this problem? Yes, that is... 22. Bakit 22? Because uh, that is the number that appeared the most number of times. So, so kaya 22 yung mode natin siya dyan. So, also, the data set is said to be unimodal. So, kapag may isa tayong mode, ang tawag natin doon unimodal. Another example, the speed of a 10 stenographer in typing per minute are as follows 121, 110, 120, 119, 112, 121, 118, 115, 107, and 115. So, find the mode of the data set. So, first we need to arrange the data in ascending or descending order. Next, Determine the number of the, that appear the most number of times. So, in this uh, given data set, so we have 2, 115 and 121. Pareha silang may tigda dalawa. So, therefore, the data set has two modes. And that is 115 and 121. So, the data set is said to be bimodal. So, kapag dalawa naman daw yung modes natin, we call that as bimodal. Another example, find the mode of the given data 2, 5, 8, 9, 11, 4, 7, and 23. So, pag inarrange natin in ascending order, wala tayong makukuhang mode. So, therefore, there is no mode. We also, we have the weighted mean. So, when you say the weighted mean, this is uh, the number from x sub 1 to x sub n with the respective assigned weight. So, uh, paano to ginagawa? Kadalasan ginagamit to kapag kinukompute natin yung grade natin. At uh, especially in college. Kasi sa college may mga units yung bawat subject. 
So, for example, for example, we have, okay, we are going to use this uh, formula to get the weighted mean, the summation of x times w over summation of w, where your summa uh, summation of x times w is the sum of the products formed by multiplying each number by its assigned weight. So, and uh, uh, your denominator is the sum of all weights. So, for example, many colleges use the four-point grading system. So, let's say, yung letter A. So, sa ibang colleges kasi le letters yung grade nila. So, yung A that is equal to four points, B equals to three points, C is equal to two points, D is equal to one point, and F is equal to zero. Find the grade point average of Dillion's grades in the given semester course grade. So here's the grade or the average grade of Dillion's in the fourth course. So we have sa English, ang grade niya is B, History uh, A, Chemistry D, Algebra C. So ano ang gagawin natin? So by using the formula of weighted mean, so we can compute uh, his uh, general point average. So, so, paano ginagawa? Since dito, sa English niya, B yung grade niya, and B is equivalent to 3, so, ita times natin sa number of units ng subject. So, 3 times 4 plus, so sa history A, so, ang A natin, that is 4 points, so, 4 times 3, number, it, yung 3 is the number of units ng history. And also, chemistry, we have D, so, ang D natin is 1, kaya 1 times 3, plus, and then yung algebra is C, and that is 2 points times 4, divided by 14. So, ang 14 na to is the number of units. Okay, so, get the product of this, in, of your numerator, so that is 35, no, product of it, and then add. So, that is 35 divided by 14. So, the answer is 2.5. So, therefore, Dillion's GPA for the given semester is 2.5. Approximately, that is B. Okay? A frequency distribution which is a table that lists observed events and the frequency occurrence of each observed event is often used to organize raw data. So, you can use frequency distribution kapag sobrang dami yung given data set. Like for example, lagpas na ng 50 or umaabot na ng 100 given data set. So kung i-arrange mo yan by ascending order, sobrang haba yung gagawin mo. So this is another way na ma-organize mo yung data set. So for example, uh, you survey, oh no, you conduct a survey, then tinanong mo yung number of computers per household from the 40 households. So ito yung response nila. So, we're going to find the mean of the data set. So, para makuha natin yan, so anong gagawin natin? We need to uh, use the frequency distribution wherein we can uh, present the data set into tables. So, arrange natin into two columns. So, yung first column natin, that is the number of computers na meron yung bawat household. And yung second columns natin, that is the number of households. So, for example, so, yung number of computers is from 0 to 7. So, anong ibig sabihin nito? So, merong limang household out of 40 na walang computer. So, merong 12 na households na may tig isang computer. At merong 14 households na merong tig dalawang computer. So, ganyan natin present. So, this is out of 40 household. So, paano natin gawin? Okay, you can use the weighted mean. So, paano ginagawa? Multiply lang natin yung x times f. So, 0 times 5 plus 1 times 12 plus 2 times 14. Mumultiply natin yan and add. Divided by 40 because we have 40 household. So, after that, so that is 79 divided by 40. So, the answer is 1.975. Or, uh, that is also already 2. Kasi hindi naman natin pwedeng sabihin na 1.975 computer. Walang ganon, no? Kasi binibilang natin as whole number yung number of computer. So, kapag may decimal, ano yun? Ano, anong parts ng computer lang yun? So, therefore, the mean number of computers per household is 2. 
I hope you learned something from my this. Thank you for watching this video. I hope you learned something. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and hit the bell button para updated kayo for more video tutorial. This is your guide in learning your math lesson, your WOW Math channel.